Vice President Kamala Harris toured a Space Force base in California Monday where she announced the United States' new policy on anti-satellite missile tests. Those are military demonstrations where a spacecraft in orbit is destroyed using a missile system. Here's some of what she had to say. I am pleased to announce that as of today, the United States commits not to conduct destructive, direct ascent anti-satellite missile testing. Simply put, these tests are dangerous, and we will not conduct them. NBC News national security correspondent Ken Delaney joins us now to dive more into this. Ken, good morning. So let, let the background here really is Russia launched a missile at one of its own satellites back in November, which created hundreds of pieces of space debris that are now circling the Earth. Help us understand the risk that debris poses to our national security. Well, Joe, there are two threats to national security in this context. There is the space debris. There is also the anti-satellite weapons themselves, which threaten our communication systems. But in terms of the space debris, after that Russian test, there were seven astronauts in the International Space Station. They had to take cover and get in essentially emergency exit vehicles because they were at risk of being disrupted. You know, be, that, that station could have been damaged by the space debris, which travels at like 15,000 miles an hour in, in orbit and can strike a spacecraft like a missile, like a bullet. So it's really dangerous. It's a big problem. And so that's why the United States is doing this. They're also, you know, the United States tested one of these weapons back in 1985. So we have these weapons, it's believed, and um, we, we um, don't need to test them anymore. So it's kind of easy for us to say no more tests. But it is a huge um, risk to sort of the security of space. Uh, China has conducted one of these tests. Russia did in the fall. And now the United States, probably knowing that they're not going to be able to negotiate a treaty with Russia in the middle of this war, is going it alone, just making this unilateral move almost to try to shame our adversaries into doing the same thing, Joe. Yeah, I mean, some might argue the vice president is speaking about, you know, establishing norms in space. You talked about some of our rivals there. What is it they're doing in this new theater of conflict? What are their priorities? So uh, our own Tom Costello had an exclusive look the other day at U.S. Space Force in Colorado, and generals there told him that China is poised to outpace the United States in terms of investment in the militarization of space over the next eight years. So China is developing anti-satellite weapons. Um, they did, as I said, test one in 2007. Um, and, you know, we are extremely vulnerable because our entire military communicates through satellites, as, as does our civilian infrastructure. So um, our adversaries are building up their capabilities in space, and that's why the U.S. is also trying to build up defensive posture to kind of deal with that and track um, potential militarization of space. Um, it, it, it's a really scary prospect and one that is not getting a lot of attention. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so if Russia, China, North Korea don't go along, does this put the U.S. at a strategic disadvantage? Well, Republicans are certainly arguing that today. They think this is a bad idea, for the most part, to unilaterally say we're not going to test without the expectation that Russia and China would go along. But, you know, there's a there's a kind of a precedent for this. Not exactly. But in the 1960s, the U.S. negotiated a nuclear test ban treaty with the Soviet Union for the good of mankind, you know, not to test nuclear weapons anymore. That's the kind of thing the United States would like to see here. It seems like we're a long way from that, though, Joe. All right. Ken Delaney, an important topic. Thanks so much for speaking with us this morning. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.